Right now, the National Rifle Association is kicking off its convention a few hours away from Uvalde in Houston. At the same time, educators, teachers unions, and parents are holding a roundtable talk to talk about how to keep our kids safe in school after those 19 children and two teachers were gunned down. Take a listen. I am Sarah Lerner. I am a teacher at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. I kept 15 students safe in my classroom while a gunman opened fire, killing 17, injuring 17, and traumatizing an entire community. I still teach at the school. Um, I am a parent as well. And I see the toll that being a generation raised under school shootings has taken on these children who I educate and who I live with. Joining me now from Houston is Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, Abby Clements, who was teaching second grade during the Sandy Hook shooting and is currently a fourth grade teacher in Newtown, Connecticut, and Sarah Lerner, that teacher at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. I don't know, and my understanding is you may not have been able to hear the press conference that just happened, so if I can just give you a couple of the headlines. We know now that the police officials there believe it was the wrong decision not to breach that door, not to go into the school. The gunman fired more than 100 rounds, but it was a harrowing series of 911 calls that were described, including from two children. Uh, including calls saying that there are people still alive in here, there are students still alive in here, and two calls begging to please send in the police. And during that time, apparently, the incident scene commander made the decision that this was not an active shooter situation. It was about an hour and 20 minutes, Sarah, to pick up on what you just said from the time shots were first fired, an hour and 20 minutes until they breached that door and stop the shooter. What goes through your mind when you hear that as someone who has lived it? It is, uh, I mean, it's hard to believe and it's, it's just terrible. I was in the room with my students for three hours waiting to be released from, or by the SWAT team. I wasn't in the building where the shooting occurred at my school. Um, but I was the building next to it and waiting that long to have someone come in is just unconscionable to me. Randy, where's your head right now? What do you hope to achieve by traveling there to Texas? Well, I'm Chris, I'm sitting with the um, two ladies who are also on the screen with you. And as you were speaking, we were all wincing and we're all holding each other's hands. I mean, we have to change this. And it can't just be that the only res response is how good the police response is afterwards. We actually have to stop mass shootings. And if UK can do it, if Australia can do it, we, and if we can put somebody in the moon as the United States of America, we can get through the political power struggle and do this common sense gun violence measures that um, we know needs to happen, as well as dealing with lots of other issues like mental health and social media. So my head is not just anger, but it's what creates the common ground, the engagement to bring America together to stop the mass shootings of grandmothers in Buffalo or children in Sandy Hook, Parkland, or Texas. A Abby, the fact that you made that trip says to me, maybe you haven't given up hope. Am I right about that? What can you tell us about what you're thinking right now? Well, Chris, the update is just heartbreaking all over again. Um, these weapons have the power to do the unimaginable. And we know with what the families in Uvalde had to go through to identify their children, we, these weapons should not be on the streets. And we know how fast these events happen. So if anybody wants to come to me and say to armed teachers, 
They have no idea how fast. From the time the perpetrator came into Sandy Hook School, turned left instead of right, where my students and I were hiding, we heard 154 shots that devastated families and community in this community forever in Newtown, Connecticut. And our hearts, all my colleagues in the Newtown School District, we are all standing alongside the families in Uvalde and the educators there. And we will not let this disappear from the headlines. We will continue to do this work as I have done and many before me to make a change in this country. Gun violence is a leading cause of death for children in America. What are we doing? I've asked this of many parents over the years. Um, and I'll ask you, Abby, how do you keep going? Look, surviving the tragedy almost 10 years ago, I'm not the same person. That survivor guilt is weighs heavily on me. And the only way that I knew to move forward with that is to do this work. Um, I met with a few of my former second grade students who survived so long with me on that fateful day. And they are juniors in high school and they are angry. And I have them with me all the time because I want them to know that their teacher is not going to stop fighting for them and for their friends who were killed on that day and for their peers to continue to die, whether it's in schools or in communities, on sitting on their porches, going to the park. This is just what I have to do. And I continue to organize teachers. This today, the event, Randy Weingarten organized and NEA organized was absolutely impactful. We sat with educators from all over Texas, um, activists, and I know together we can make change. I don't know if she was there, um, Randy, but I spoke yesterday to the president of the uh, Texas State Teachers Association, clearly upset, clearly frustrated. And, you know, she basically said she doesn't think lawmakers have a clue what it is to be a teacher. She doesn't mm -hmm. think that they, <laughs> the teachers are agreeing with me, and obviously yeah. you are as well. So what's your message to them? To as you all get minutes. together, what's your message to them? So, you know, um, I used to tease, Chris, that anybody who said really stupid things about education, just spend five minutes in a classroom. Actually, just five minutes under the tutelage of, like, um, <laughs> one of these two great teachers that we're sitting with today. Um, but what is worse right now is that they don't trust us, particularly in Texas, which is where they've banned books and, you know, stopped kids from um, talking about their, you know, who they are and their sexuality and can, you know, basically say to parents, if you if, if your kids are trans, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to um, uh, escape you. So what we need to actually do is we need to tell them, if you trust us so much to carry a gun, why don't you trust us to do what our work really is? Trust us to be the mind workers. We're not the body armor people. We are the mind workers. We are the ones who try to help um, our kids critically think and know themselves and feel good about themselves. And and that's and and what is really happening is that you have these cultural wars that are just ripping America apart. Instead of giving the teachers of the of the country the support that they need to do the work we have to do to reduce anxiety, to create a welcoming, safe environment, and give kids hope. Look what Abby just said to you. Give kids hope. What these teachers do is they give kids hope. That's what we need. I guess, Sarah, in, in closing, look, first of all, all of us are in awe. I don't know personally anybody who isn't in awe of what teachers have done over the last two, two and a half years because of COVID. So that alone is enough to challenge anyone. 
uh, the, the commitment that was made, the connections that were made under the most trying of circumstances. We won't even go into pay, support, other issues. And now both of you who are teachers see what happened to you happen again. Is there something that can happen for this community right now? Is there something that can happen for these teachers right now that at least may show a little bit of hope? Um, yeah, there is. They need to have their stories heard. They need to share their experiences and they need to seek help, mental health counseling, whatever it is they need to move through the events that they just experienced. Abby, a teacher in New York City, Sari Rosenberg and I created Teachers Unified to End Gun Violence, which is a group that is giving a voice to teachers because we are often left out of the conversation when it comes to gun violence. And, you know, to be clear, gun violence is not just school shootings. It's gun violence in communities of color. It's the shooting we just saw in Buffalo. It's domestic violence, suicide by gun violence. It's so large. And it's critical that the teacher voice is heard so that things like this will stop happening. Well, I thank you for taking the time to talk to us, and, and we hope to have you back um, as this uh, all unfolds and we see where it goes and whether or not there is indeed any change. Sarah Lerner, Abby Clements, Randy Weingarten, thank you all for being with us. Appreciate it.